Hello, everyone, and welcome again. We are here with Eleanor Beaton today. Uh, I would like to give a little bit of introduction about her first. Um, so she's an internationally recognized authority um, in women's leadership and the CEO of Safi Media, a coaching and a training company for female uh, founders. Um, Eleanor, how are you doing today? Great, thank you. I'm delighted to be here and add value to your audience. Cool. Uh, so she's going to talk about uh, uh, talk to us about how to build a irrepressible confidence required for the world class contribution in any industry. Right. Um, so please go ahead. Stage is yours. Thank you. Thank you so much, Urvashi. Hello and welcome everyone to this session. We're going to be talking about how to build irrepressible confidence that's of course required for world-class contribution in any industry. Now, I'm going to be really focusing my talk on those of you who are actively seeking to enhance your career um, in tech, female founders, business owners, and the impact that really cultivating irrepressible confidence can have for you and on your career and ultimately on the sales trajectory of your company. So let's dive in. I want to begin with the premise that confidence is the ultimate standout ingredient for anyone at any level of their career, whether you are an entrepreneur or working inside an organization. A Harvard business, the Harvard Business Review published a study of 17,000 respondents. And what was embedded in that study was that candidates who had high levels, who demonstrated high levels of confidence were two times as likely to be picked as CEO. Now, I certainly know from my experience working with female founders and women entrepreneurs that your confidence as a founder or as an entrepreneur plays a huge role in helping you to secure funding, in helping you to close deals, in helping you to really acquire the best talent that you can to grow your startup. So the concept here and the premise upon which this whole talk is based is that confidence is the ultimate stand out ingredient. And there's a lot of data that really backs that up. But you probably know that inherently yourself as a person, you know that when you are confident in your abilities, when you feel you know, level with the task ahead of you, when you feel that you have incredible value to bring to the table and you are able to show that to people, not just sort of keep that knowledge to yourself, but actually demonstrate it to the marketplace, to an audience, to recruiters or, or hiring committees, to customers and potential clients that you feel better and you probably have experienced greater levels of success with that type of confidence. So the question becomes, how do you build it? So give me 15 minutes. We started a little late here. So give me 15 minutes of your undivided attention. And I promise I'll share three surprising counterintuitive secrets to building irrepressible confidence. I promise I'm not going to tell you to believe in yourself. I know you've heard that before. I'm really going to, you know, I dig dug deep here to think about how I could introduce this idea of irrepressible confidence in a very new way and really provide you with some insight that you probably haven't thought about or heard before. And I'll definitely let you know at the end of the presentation where you can go to get more tactical information on what I'm sharing and how you can keep in touch with me because I'd love to hear from you. So a couple of things I was introduced originally, but wanted to give you a couple of my real deal um, credentials. So I'm the founder of a company called Safi Media. Safi Media is on a mission together with my colleagues. We are on a mission to double the number of female founders who scale past a million dollars in annual revenue by 2030. And we're doing that through storytelling, entrepreneurship, education, and business coaching. That's what our company is all about. I'm the host of the number one ranked Made in Canada podcast for women entrepreneurs called Power Presence Position. I'm the former chair of the Visiting Women's Executive Exchange Program at the Yale School of Management. And I've been a finalist for a National Business Book Award. And of course, that's the most prominent business book award in this country. So that's just a little bit about my sort of real deal um, credentials. So let's talk about three strategies to 
surprising strategies really to help you build irrepressible confidence, to close the deal, to scale your company, to close sales with potential customers, um, to land the job of your dreams. So first up is the idea of context. So context really means, do you understand the environment that you are stepping into? And this is really important because when you understand the context of the organization you are, um, you know, trying to work at, the marketplace that you are selling into, the territory that you are supposed to lead, when you understand context, it helps you understand where you fit into the picture. And humans are hardwired for connection and belonging. So understanding context helps you understand where and how you fit and where and how you belong. So context is everything, okay? When you understand co context, you therefore understand how you belong in this picture, in this organization, where in this marketplace. And when you know where you belong, you feel safe, you feel anchored, you feel confident, right? In order for, a lot of people say that growth requires discomfort, and that's true, but it also at the same time requires that we are anchored in a place of safety. And when you know where you belong, that helps you. So let's talk a little bit about today's context, because the truth is, if I were sharing this with you three years ago, as somebody who is looking to advance, whether you're looking to advance your career or grow your business, the context would have been different. The context today in Canada at the tail end, we hope, of a global pandemic is so different than it was two years ago or three years ago. <clears throat> so let's talk about that context. Let's say, let's look at the job market. So I'm sure you have heard of a trend called the great resignation. And the great resignation was a term coined to put language to a the modern state of the job market, whereby what the pandemic has done has caused so many of us to reevaluate what's important to us, to reevaluate what we want to do with our lives, to reevaluate if we fit in this organization, or is it time for us to make a bold move or to make some life changes? So with that in mind, monster.com did a survey of job seekers. And what they found was that 95% of the job seekers that they surveyed said that they were seriously considering quitting their jobs or changing careers. My clients who run HR consulting services, I have many clients who run HR type businesses or consulting type businesses in the HR space. They are telling me that their businesses have doubled, you know, um, and inquiries from clients who are looking for them to, you know, looking for help from these HR consultants to help them manage their workforce issues, to help them build engagement, and most importantly, to retain the top talent. What does this mean? This means it is a job seekers market. If you are a job seeker today, you have the power, you need to understand the context of the great resignation and that this is really impacting, <coughs> excuse me, uh, companies and workplace culture and companies are really looking to find and retain the best talent that they can. And I know you've probably heard that before, but this time in light of the great resignation and the impact that that's having, on job seekers and on just pe regular people like you and I reevaluating our lives and what's important to us. It's a job seekers market. It means that you have choice and you don't need to be needy ultimately. And we know that neediness is one of the least attractive qualities when it comes like the opposite of confidence, right? So those of you who are actually entrepreneurs and are listening in, 
Context is everything too. The great resignation may or may not impact the trajectory of your business. It could potentially introduce more competition for you in the marketplace. So that's something to think about. But there's another piece of context that I think is critical for any business owner. And it is, in the, it is the fact that in the last year, the national savings rate in Canada, according to the Bank of Canada, the national savings rate or statistics Canada rather, has gone from 18 billion in 2019 to 212 billion dollars in 2020. So in the course of a year, the national savings, can, Canadians' national savings, the, the, the stockpile of cash that Canadian households are sitting on grew from $18 billion to $212 billion. Thanks to savings from not being able to travel or be out and spend money. And also, of course, the stimulus that the government has injected into the economy has a lot to do with that. Canadian households and Canadian businesses are sitting on unprecedented levels of cash. And so this is important context for businesses. That cash, as we hopefully get vaccinated and hopefully start to keep this pandemic under control, as the economies truly start to open up, open up again, and we are seeing that despite some of the challenges with the Delta variant, economies are on our economies across this country are beginning to open up again. We have a lot of pent up demand and that creates impressive context for us as entrepreneurs. Huge stockpiles of money in the economy, according to the research, and that money can certainly be funneled into your business if you confidently make offers and really make your case for why households, businesses, your potential clients should be doing business with you. So that's Tip number one, counterintuitive, but understand context. When I was a kid, I used to play squash with my mom and my mom was an incredible squash player. If you play squash, go ahead and say, I'm a squash player in the comments, I'd love to see. But in squash, from a positional standpoint, you always wanna control the tee. You wanna know your position in the court. And in squash, one of the best positions is to try to be in the center of the court, it's called the tee. The same is true when it comes to building confidence. You want to understand context and claim your position. So that's tip number one, is to build context, okay? Understand where you fit. And as I said, whether you're a business owner because of the pent up savings that are in the economy right now, or a job seeker because of the great resignation, which has made it a job seekers market, we are in a seller's market, okay? I've sold my house this year, totally a seller's market. So just understand that context and allow that to be a source of positional confidence. All right, tip number two, just gonna do a quick time check here. Disqualify. Disqualification, especially when you're in a seller's market, what becomes really important for you is to understand that you have the power and authority, even if you're the one looking for a job, or even if you are the company or the salesperson looking to close deals, or you are the founder looking to close a round of financing for your company, understand that you have the power, the personal power, to be able to set an intention and make a decision about who you are for and who you are not for. This is the art of disqualify selling that really talented salespeople understand and I think this principle from selling can definitely be applied to job seekers, to founders, to um, leaders in business to really help you to build confidence. Most of us were raised to be grateful for opportunities, to be thankful. If somebody offers us something, we should say yes, that kind of thing. So it's kind of a cultural shift to actually step back and actually look the gift horse in the mouth to borrow a popular expression, right? And it's this idea of disqualify selling means that you take the time to clearly evaluate what it is that you really want, the type of organization, if you're a job seeker, the type of organization you want to align yourself with. If you are an entrepreneur, the type of customer that you want to welcome into your business and do business with, or the type of um, team that you want to secure financing from, as an example, the type of investor who means a lot to you that's a very aligned with where you want to go. So you get very focused on exactly who your 
optimum who, and you elegantly, humbly, kindly disqualify everybody else. So getting really clear on who you're for and who you are not for and doing two things. One, really making sure that when you are, you know, vetting opportunities, whether it's as a job seeker, as a customer, if I think about as a, as an entrepreneur, you are, when you have leads coming into your business, that you are really carefully, um, qualifying and disqualifying. And actually most of your energy is about actually goes to disqualifying people who are not a good fit. So I would say that a, a really fantastic way to build confidence, a counterintuitive way to build confidence. The second tip is to focus on disqualification, getting clear on what you don't want in order to make lots of room for what you do want really critical. And again, think about it. The act of disqualification really allows an individual to, number one, you've got to clear on who you're for and not for. And number two, you really exert your power to choose who you're going to engage with and who you are not going to engage with. And any marketer knows that disqualification is actually much more powerful than qualification, right? So that's the second really counterintuitive one. I know that's a, it is a counterintuitive tip. If you need more insight on that, I'm certainly happy to explain. I'll give you my contact um, information later. And then the final tip I'd like to share with you as I wrap up is this, is the idea of captivating. When you are able to captivate, when you are able to command attention, um, to command attention, to command retention, and to command intention, A-I-R. Attention, the ability to get attention for your point, whether you're a job seeker, whether you are an entrepreneur looking for funding or more customers, the ability to get somebody's attention is critical. Retention, that's the ability to be memorable. Intention, the ability to direct a course of action. All of this can be done with effective communication. And when you're able to, to captivate attention, retention, and intention, it gives you a lot of personal power, which in turn builds irrepressible confidence. So much to say on the idea of how to captivate, but I'll leave you with this. It's really about learning the science of attention. Um, whether you are looking for a job or running a business, understand that your biggest enemy is overwhelm. And therefore, the most important thing that you can do to confidently share your value is to be able to get and retain attention and therefore understand the science of attention. So I wanted to leave you with a quick tip here in terms of how you can improve your communication, leverage the power of storytelling to be memorable and to ensure that you are communicating your ideas in the most powerful way. And when you are a powerful communicator, it truly builds irrepressible confidence. So step number one is to, to stop speaking in general topics and start disciplining yourself to be able to state a big idea in its simplest form. What is the big idea that you want to share? Okay. State your big idea in its simplest form. Number two, Share a short story to reinforce that point. Step number three, provide a metaphor to drive it home. And step number four is to close with a powerful call to action. Okay, big idea. Simplify your ideas down to one sentence if you can. Think of a brief two to three to four line story to reinforce your point share a metaphor to drive it home. So an example would be, might be my story earlier was when I was telling about playing squash with my mom, the metaphor was the T in the squash court. And when you, when you controlled the T, when you understood that power position, it could give you a lot of confidence in the game, right? That's an example. And then ultimately close with a powerful call to action. Um, confidence comes when you're able to leverage attention and connection and drive it somewhere. Let's stay in touch. Please accept my resume. 
go here to buy, sign up here, you know, very, very clear call to action. So that's just so critical. And honestly, if there's one skill to help you build irrepressible confidence, it's the ability to communicate clearly. So there you have it. Three tips, three surprising counterintuitive insights to help you build truly irrepressible confidence to, to allow you to get into the position as a founder, as a job seeker, as a leader to make a meaningful contribution in any industry. If you'd like to stay in touch with me, just go here, eleanorbeaton.com forward slash story. And there you'll actually find more information on how to tips for leveraging the science of attention. And you'll see those tips are primarily for female founders and women entrepreneurs, but anybody can get some good value from that. So I want to thank you so much for, um, for allowing me to be part of this great event. I hope that you got a lot of value from this and from the other incredible speakers as well. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Eleanor, for your wonderful uh, speak, uh, speech. Uh, it was very informative uh, indeed. Um, we can have now the question and answers. Um, uh, so there is uh, Paula. Um, her question is that, do you agree with faking till you make it if you don't have all the necessary skills for a job? Mm, that's a great question, Paula. So I, I uh, no, I don't agree with faking it till you make it um, for the simple reason that I think the most um, integrity is everything, right? And so I think being, being um, very upfront and aligned um, and always, always sort of speaking the truth, you know, is really critical. But here's what I will say. Here's what I will say. The fact that you don't or that somebody doesn't, let's say a, a candidate doesn't have all the skills for the job, what is it that it, what belief is underneath that that has us say, we, I have to fake it until I make it. I only have 50%. They listed 10 skills. I only have five. So if you believe the only way I'm going to get this job is if I have 10 out of 10 of the skills then you naturally, the conclusion we're going to come to is then I have to fake it until I make it. And so what I would suggest is rather than putting ourselves into the uncomfortable, you know, feeling of having to fake it till I make it, which puts us out of integrity, which takes us out of our seat of confidence and power, which people feel in us. Um, I think what's far better is to rather identify and work on the belief that in order to be successful, I have to have 10 out of 10 of these skills. You know, and I just think that a more empowering belief for someone in that moment is, look, I have five out of 10 of these skills, but the reality is I have a lot of skills that they haven't mentioned here that based on my knowledge of this job and of this organization are going to be equally as valuable. So I'm going to be very upfront about who I am, but I'm going to do everything that I can to show up and, and show that even without 10 out of 10 of these skills, I'm a fantastic candidate. And now you're able to go from a place of power, you know, from a place of deep seated confidence rather than um, from a place of feeling like you have to be out of integrity to promote yourself. So I hope that's helpful. Cool. Uh, yes, it was indeed. I have one uh, question from my end as well. Um, so as a female, um, whether um, whether you are be you are at the a management position or you are a CEO a lot of times because of the hormones and stuff you kind of get mm -hmm. emotional at a certain point for example mm -hmm. that same goes for a man let's say for us if a man is using um, inappropriate language or getting super angry or things like that we just feel oh it's fine because it was a he um, you know at, at the point he was like probably angry and you know it was just the heat in the moment and then they just uh, sort of behaved in certain way right Whereas in, for the female, if they if a female would just cry in a room, uh, out of out out of the ima, um, emotion, being a CEO or a, let's say very in a management position, I mean the reaction is not that great. Maybe you, you've been perceived as a immature, emotionally immature, or things like that. What do you think about that? Is it is it okay to show your emotion as a human? Because it's completely like a man would just get. Uh, pissed off or something that's their reaction and whereas women would yes. probably just cry or to show that's like the showing your emotion right so mm -hmm. what do you think as a, as a leader or yeah. as a CEO of the company is it okay to 
you know, feel like that or you think it's not a good idea? Yeah, I love this question. And I think every, uh, and I, and I, and I know that so many people, men and women, people of all genders have had the experience of feeling that they need to, um, they need to hide yeah. expressing who they are, you know? So of course, I think learning to understand and manage our emotions uh, is an important thing. Mm -hmm. But I personally believe that emotions have a place at work. And I also know that there is certainly systemic bias in organizations that can have, if somebody has an, you know, a, an expression of vulnerability or emotion um, to, you know, that there's, there can be a stereotype that that person yeah. isn't a good leader um, that they're not strong, you yeah, know, and yeah, that kind exactly. of thing. So that's certainly like a stereotype. Mm. And what I'll say, remember, you're talking to an entrepreneur and there is for the last 10 years, women have been leaving corporate Canada and corporate Americas to start their own jobs, yeah. to start their own businesses rather. Why is this? I feel that this is a trend that happens when people feel you know, I want to go, I want to create an organization where I can be 100% myself. So I think that's one alternative that people take. Um, of course, there's lots of incredible organizations and lots of incredible men and women that work inside these organizations. I think for everybody at the end of the day, you have to make, you have to look inside and make a call for yourself. And the call for yourself is, do I want to be working in an organization where I can't express myself or where expressing my feelings is seen mm -hmm. as weak. Now, some people are going to say, actually, this I can't express who I fully am. It's not safe for me to cry or share my emotions in this organization. And I'm going to stay here and stick it out anyway. So mm -hmm. that person has done the calculation. So for yeah. that, if that's you guys, if, if there's somebody here, if, if that, that that's you, if you're in a situation where you don't feel totally comfortable, but you've made the conscious decision, I want to be here because even though I don't feel good here right now, or I don't feel supported in this way, I want to be here for another year for career reasons or whatever. Mm -hmm. When you're in that situation, you have to use the three B's technique. So the three B's technique, what is that? It means... How can you, the first B is better. How can I make this situation better, right? So if you're in a situation where you don't, and that could be finding allies, finding people mm -hmm. to kind of support you. So that's getting it better. Um, how can I barter it? Is there some, is there some situation, like if I'm feeling particularly vulnerable during a certain week, is there somebody that I can get to help me with some aspect of this? Um, if there's certain individuals that you just can't take that bring that out in you, are there ways that you can have partner with other people so they can take on that part, they can do that presentation, whatever. And then the third one is bag it, meaning just forget about it. You know, and that would be where you go and find another place. So mm -hmm. I think it's about being so conscious and also as a woman, I'll you know speak for women here, understanding that, you know, we're not a part of that, you know, if 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 we want to show our emotions, there's nothing wrong with that. It's just at the environment that doesn't accept it and doesn't condone it. Yeah. And, you know, we get to choose if we want to stay there or not. So long answer to a fantastic question. I think it's something so many of us have experienced and dealt with. Yeah, well, thank you. The three B, I would never, I would never forget for sure. Yeah. Um, thank you so much for your time, and I really appreciate uh, you uh, taking your time and explaining in a full way of for all of the questions that were asked, uh, and also to everyone who were listening to us uh, patiently uh, enough for all the session. So thank you so much, uh, and we'll see us again. Thanks, everyone. Bye bye. Thanks. Bye.